I'm at Mizzen Head, the most southwesterly point of the of the Irish mainland, and um, it's it's an extreme, it's an extremity of Ireland, and it's extreme in weather as well. It's really blowing a hoolie today. It's pouring wet, and um, as I say, the wind's really blowing hard. But I wanted to come here. This is the start of a of a long journey from Mizzen Head all the way north to Malin Head, the most northerly point in Ireland. It's a route that I cycled a few years ago, and um, we're keen to come back in the camper van and uh, travel up that route. A route that's known nowadays as the Wild Atlantic Way and wild it most certainly is this morning. It's uh, an interesting place. I like extremities. That's why I like climbing mountains. I like to peep over horizons. But when you get to a place like this, there are no horizons to peep over. You feel you've come to the end of the line. Today I'm in Malin Head and the very northern point of Ireland and the contrast is unbelievable. It's a day of uh, blue skies and warm sun, um, although it's still pretty windy. In between we've had a, a remarkable time travelling up the, the western seaboard uh, of Ireland. Uh, a route that's kind of known as the Wild Atlantic Way. We've had a tremendous time, we've seen all sorts of fascinating landscapes, uh, met interesting people, heard some great legends, and we heard some great music as well. So I hope you can join us uh, for the best of it in the next wee while or so. excellent camper van air in, in Cove, just south of Cork. And if anybody needs any evidence of uh, just what a great idea it is to turn a, a parking area over to camper vans and motorhomes, um, then this is, this is it. It's just fantastic. There's something like 30 camper vans and motorhomes uh, in here tonight. And it's, you know, it's, it's only just turned May. It's not really the season yet. But it's, um, it's very impressive. If you think about 30 camper vans every night, a 10 or a night, uh, you know, that adds up to a fair bit of money for the local economy. So it's, uh, it's going to be good. We arrived here in Cove yesterday and uh, spent the night here. And Cove is it's, it's an interesting little town. It's where the Titanic sailed from. And it's got historical links with the Lusitania. And of course, it's from here that so many people uh, left for America uh, during the years of the, the, the potato famine. So there are real strong historical links here and also very strong connections with, with the Scottish Highlands, the people who were evicted and cleared from the Scottish Highlands and sent off to the New World. First of all, let's look at some of the best airs we stayed at. We found Ireland to be pretty camper van friendly and more and more low cost overnight stopovers are appearing like this one at the West Lodge Hotel on the outskirts of Bantry in County Cork. Now they actually have a motorhome park with water and waste disposal for 10 euros a night and that's about £8.50. No electric hookup though. One of my favourites was the Goosey Island campervan park at Sneem in County Kerry. In the heart of the village with everything except toilets it costs 15 euros with EHU, just over 12 quid. It's in a fantastic position by the river and the walk alongside the river it really is beautiful.
We found this little air at Ross V and the Ring of Kerry, a sliver of land on a hillside looking down on Dingo Bay. No facilities at all, and an honesty box for donations. The caravan and motorhome park at Kilrush Marina in County Clare is a real gem. Full facilities, showers, waste disposal, water and EHU for €25 Euros a night. That's about £21. And an opportunity, if you like, to mix with the hoi polloi of the yachting world. I think my favourite air, although it was more of a campsite, was at the beach bar at Ogris in County uh, Sligo. A thatched cottage pub uh, and a campsite only a few metres from a fantastic beach. A surf school too, almost van life California style. It cost 20 euros or just over 17 pound. Full facilities and a great pint of Guinness in the bar. The food was good too. One of the things that delighted us about camper vanning in Ireland was the number of pubs that were happy to allow you to park overnight in their car park. A great example was the Sea View Tavern near Malinhead in Donegal. They allowed you to park up in the field adjacent to the pub, a field that was also adjacent to the sea and the beach and for absolutely no cost at all. Needless to say, we enjoyed a few beers and an excellent meal in the tavern and a fine sea view from the camper van window. <laughs> So what were the highlights of our trip? Well, I was keen to pay homage at the grave of one of my favourite poets, William Butler Yeats, just outside Sligo Town. You might know this. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree, and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. Those words mean so much to me, as do the words of a book called Children of the Dead End by Patrick McGill. He was born in Glen Tees in Donegal and was uh, feed to a farmer at the age of 12. He ran away, went to Scotland and became a navvy, a poet and an author, eventually rising to the role of King's Librarian at Windsor. Children of the Dead End really is a, a, a remarkable book and I was keen to visit the, the author's birthplace. We enjoyed some great walks, mostly coastal walks, and I, I can't get up the hills as well these days as I once did, but the variety of coastal walks was just fantastic. Musical highlights too in Westport, County Mayo, I met a man I'm often mistaken for, the great Matt Malloy, formerly of the Bothy Band and uh, latterly the Chieftains, possibly the best known traditional music band in the world. I told him people often mistake me for him and he suggested it was probably because we had a similar hairstyle. Matt Malloy, a great traditional flute player and a very nice guy. I was thrilled to return to Brandon, one of the finest mountains in Britain and Ireland, a hill I first climbed, oh, about 50 years ago, I think. The mountain is named after St Brendan, Brendan the Navigator, who left these shores of Kerry in a leather-bound curra, and, so the story goes, discovered North America years before Christopher Columbus. It said he had an oratory, a little prayer cell, very close to the summit of Brandon. But if I'm looking for a real highlight of our journey, it has to be the couple of nights we spent in Doolan, County Clare. This tiny village is the epicentre of Irish traditional music and we just love the place. While we were there, we had a fabulous display of wind and wave power just beyond Doolan Pier. We enjoyed a great coastal walk to see the cliffs of Moor. And we visited one of the greatest pubs anywhere in the world, McGann's. 
to hear Geraldine McGann and Bowran, the wonderful bazooki playing of Cyril O'Donoghue, and the brilliant Ullian piping of Blackie O'Connell of Ennis County Clare. Just listen to this. Well, that's it. Some of the best of our month-long trip along the wild Atlantic Way in Ireland, from Mizzenhead to Malinhead. I'd strongly recommend an app, Motorhome Parking Ireland, and I'll put a contact down below along with the references to the music we've used. Ireland truly is campervan friendly, and we just can't wait to go back. Give it a try. I think you'll love it. Music